So I'm going to be sharing um, how in the Interinclusion website by Asher Crisp, when we talk about the past of the past, there is this pure, as though it's dead, it's not alterable, it's completely irretrievable. It's like we go into the past tense and then the past tense of the past tense. When we go into the present of the past, it's a memory, which in fact remains unchanged for the one who wishes to remember things just the way they are. When we go into the past and we go into the future of the past, it's an opening of a closed chapter in a book. In order to revise it, the capacity of the present and future experience to modify and amend the past as a revisionist historia, historian to one's ongoing autobiography. It's like we use our later awareness to go back and see things differently. When we're in the present and we go to the past of the present, the weight of one's history and all the baggage of one's personal experience that hinders the freedom to enjoy the freshness of the present unencumbered, that's where we find that. Um, and sometimes we want to be weighted down. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just sharing what he teaches. In the presence of the present, that's when we have the pure experience of recreation as both the self and the world forged anew. For the human subject, this power is internalized psychologically as the personal assertion of one's right to change oneself, even to the point of a full existential makeover. The future of the present is the opportunity calling, the promise that of that which exceeds the conservation of energy in the current system. The past and the future, so we're going to the future and the past tense of the future, the resurrection of the dead, an event marked by the sages as a part of the world to come. This stage would seem to reflect the kind of conservation of all life and life experience the ultimate preservation of the past in its entirety for the future in the denial of the possibility of of loss so the ultimate preservation of the past in its entirety for the future in the denial of the possibility of loss so in other words nothing can be lost in the past of in the future of the present um i'm sorry in the past of the future um significant experiences have to endure the meaning of life outlasts the length of life. If it is continually retrievable by extension, all recollection is, in fact, a resurrection of the dead. Um, the present in the future, as the Messianic age would focus collective consciousness on, the continual presence of the future, the self-evident state of ascent, a progress without regress, without regression, just progression. It's the promise of this temporal mode. And finally, the future of the future is hinted in the statement of the sages as the time which no one has seen except God. That's from Isaiah 64.3 or Yeshayahu. It's termed the future to come. This future is the alterity which that elders, um, sorry, that eludes even the vision of prophecy. Um, and now I want to talk about light visibility since Adam and Eve. So we're talking here about, you know, the past, the, the past, present and future and how in the past there's a past, a present and future. In the present, there's a past, present, and future. And in the future, there's a past, present, and future. And I found this to be phenomenally interesting. And I want to share that with um, light visibility since Adam and Eve. So there was this, this is like the teaching. So it's it's mystical, but we were all contained in that version of, so this idea that they were in the past, but it's an ongoing thing because light from then is continuous. It's not like the light stopped and then started in, you know, from the past to the future. It's a continuum, right? We're just sort of cutting things up into, into, like, like, why doesn't the, the future of the past overlap with the past of the present? They don't. They're separate. You enter from a different door. So here we're saying the light visibility. So there's this nail-thin covering, thin, translucent, not like the skin which blocks. Um, thinking of our nail, it actually sort of is like different than actual skin, which totally covers. In other words, Adam was able to see from one end of the world to the other. And maybe when he needed to be put to sleep and not see while Chava was being made, because the Midrash says it was originally her name, Chaya, life, but then he couldn't look. It was too much for him the first round. So, like, to see the life being formed, like, as if you're looking through the womb and you see it, the baby being, um, becoming. Um, so since um, it was too much, the second time Hashem actually put him to sleep, so you didn't have to see. Now the woman can send out the baby she carries. She can handle the birth formation from the seed level to creation level, and... It's kind of like this, his vulnerability, which then paved the way for, for, for them to sin by eating that which blocks the light, the tree of knowledge of opposites, good and bad. Um, it's, it's not being able to continuously look without judging, rejecting, condemning, like I can't keep looking. Better to be put asleep or like check out or like basically like what we all sort of might struggle with. In other words, the light from Adam till now that um, 
contains all the information that perhaps maybe a lot of us, you know, we dissociate, we check out, we just can't see the breaking of our trust or the or the ugliness or the hatred or the cruelty. Um, we just want to like not look. We just want to shut our eyes, right? Um, and this reflection, the seed germinology, the baby is formed. And, it, and we can think about the day that we can tolerate seeing everything. That's what maybe we call Mashiach times. And Chavaya also means, you know, experience. Since Adam means human, the male and the female together is the human experience. And thinking of like uh, the organs, the innards that are blocked for privacy, non-visible. A gift in the dark to grow, to heal, to become. It's a blessing from Hashem where like darkness is kind of like a gift for privacy. And we do say a blessing before the Shema, which t does say that exactly that God like made the darkness. So we think, why well, would God make darkness? And here we could see that God made the darkness. In other words, God made it that he couldn't see. He made him go to sleep in the dark. So, you know, basically we're awake is when there's light. And that's sort of our circadian rhythm. Like when we're awake, when we awake, when we could see in this modern world, we have artificial light is a little different. And then this idea of solitude, space, sacred, unknown, quiet, we sort of, you know, associate with the darkness. And um, I'm going to stop there and wish you a, a beautiful Shabbos, a Shabbos of uh, sharing, sharing our best with God. In other words, the consciousness, like actually showing up and, and really internalizing this fact that we can become someone new, that we can be renewed all the time in every tense, whether it's the past of the past, the present of the past, the future of the past, the past of the present, the present of the present, the future of the present, the past of the future, the present of the future, or the future of the future. And we connect with that ever present light that God creates darkness so that we can't see, but it doesn't mean it's not there or that it wasn't continuous. And so that we can be brave and protected and um, that we have all that we need and that people don't do that to us where they shut their eyes or don't want to look, where they can be our witness as well and we can witness each other and be not condemning, not judging. Judging is always by nature a little bit separated, but rather be with and um, be nourished, be satisfied and connect with our fire, to feel the fire and to feed the fire and not to be afraid of what we used to think of as work. As we become transformed, we can make efforts, but it's because it's exciting and passionate. We feel confident. We feel ourselves and it feels amazing. So from that angle, we could um, rewrite stories and create new stories and may it be so. Um, according to God's will. Have a good Shabbos. Bye.